Hello, I would like to welcome you to our Clinical Teaching on the Run series for clinical doctors. I am Dr. Leslie Sedonik, and I will be walking you through this online presentation. This presentation is part of a series of six presentations that cover the essential teaching principles and skills for clinical teachers. Before we begin talking about how to teach, let's start by first asking ourselves why clinicians choose to teach. What motivates clinicians to teach? Surveys would suggest that most clinicians feel intrinsically motivated to teach. Clinicians teach because they want to pass on their skills to others. They enjoy spending time with students. They feel a professional responsibility and they believe that it makes them better doctors. However, despite this intrinsic motivation to teach, our actual experience of teaching in the clinical setting may not be satisfying, and over time this may result in burnout. Teaching, in fact, may begin to feel less like a joy and more like a burden. I believe that one of the primary reasons that clinicians find it stressful to have a learner in the clinic are the implicit myths and misconceptions about how to teach in the clinical setting that we were all exposed to as medical learners. These mistaken beliefs about teaching cause us to employ inefficient and ineffective teaching behaviors. These behaviors ultimately lead us to feel dissatisfied with our teaching experience. There are many extrinsic factors that can diminish one's desire to teach, but a common barrier to teach in the clinical setting is the feeling that there is not enough time to teach and that teaching students interferes with efficient patient care. To accommodate for a learner, clinicians must choose between seeing less patients and or spending more time in the clinic. So in this series of presentations, we will look at concrete strategies to rediscover the joy of teaching. We can all be better clinical teachers. Like any skill with practice and reflection, we can improve our teaching skill. There are four key steps to becoming a better clinical teacher. The key steps to becoming a better teacher are to inspire learners, involve them in the care of our patients, teach them how to think, and provide useful information to help and improve their clinical performance. Today's presentation will focus on inspiring learners. Let's begin by discussing what is an effective clinical teacher, how do adults learn in the clinical setting? And finally, how can we facilitate this learning? Many of us harbor the belief that the most important characteristic of a great teacher is someone who knows a lot and passes on that information to the learner. The currency of great teaching is felt to be how much information can be passed on to the learner. The teacher feels great about passing on important information to the learner and the student, well, the student often feels overwhelmed by an avalanche of new information. Of course, the less the student knows about a topic, the greater the temptation to fill up their minds. But in reality, the less the student knows about a topic, the less they will remember from a lecture. Lecturing in the clinic is inefficient and ineffective. The student is listening, usually not taking notes. They do not have time to reflect on this new information because right away he or she is moving on to see the next patient who usually has an entirely different problem. So what are the characteristics and behaviors of excellent clinical teachers? Think about someone who had a significant impact on your clinical education. What characteristics did that teacher possess? 
There have been a lot of studies asking students to identify the characteristics of excellent teachers. Surprisingly, these characteristics have not changed much over time. One study asked medical students and residents this question. Please describe someone who had a significant impact on your clinical education. They then analyzed their responses, and they discovered that learners recognized that influential clinical teachers adopted several different roles. First, they were respected as excellent clinical role models. Next, they were noted to be strong teachers. They were accessible and available to the learners, willing to answer questions, taught specific skills, and had an obvious commitment to teaching. They made an effort. Influential clinical teachers involved the learner in the care of their patients. They let them do something. Finally, influential clinical teachers were fun to work with. They had a host of personal characteristics that made the learner feel welcome and a valuable part of the healthcare team. Now, do you think medical students and residents are looking for the exact same characteristics in their teachers? In this study, the authors did compare the response of learners at different levels of training. What they found was that the medical students value faculty who adopt a strong teaching role, whereas residents look for faculty who adopt a strong supervisor role. Learners progress from dependence on their teachers to collaboration with their teachers to independence in pursuing their learning needs. Thus, learners' perceptions of what is a good teacher does change to some extent over their training career. This helps to explain why some faculty are very popular with medical students and not so with residents, or vice versa. It takes a skilled teacher to adapt their teaching approach to the needs and level of the learner. It also highlights how students learn in the clinical setting. In the clinical setting, our learners need to apply a variety of clinical skills to assess and manage our patients. These include history taking, clinical examination, technical and procedural skills, and counseling skills. Let us look how a student learns a new skill. Let's use learning how to take a pap smear as an example. A learner begins by watching a gynecologist examine a patient. The learner is watching an expert perform the skill. So naturally, everything goes smoothly and the expert makes the skill look easy. After watching one or two demonstrations by an expert, the learner starts to think, this looks easy. I'm sure I could do this if they just gave me a chance. I don't know what the big deal is. At this point, the learner is unconsciously incompetent. Now, what if the preceptor was to involve the learner and give them some responsibility? The preceptor can ask the learner to choose the appropriate speculum, set up all of the necessary equipment, and then position the patient. The learner naturally was not paying attention to any of these details. He or she quickly realizes there is more to the skill than meets the eye. How do you position the patient? What is the difference between the speculums? The learner is now consciously incompetent. They are aware that they don't know what they need to know to perform the skill. Now the learner is motivated to learn what is necessary so that they can proper, properly perform the procedure. With practice, the learner refines their technique and skill until they are competent. The learner is now consciously competent. At this stage, the learner is focused on every step of the procedure. Mentally rehearsing the skill before performing it is often helpful to the learner, or using mnemonics to remind them of what to ask or what to do. 
Observation of the learner by a teacher with timely and appropriate feedback will help the learner to reach this stage more easily than if the learner is left on their own. Throughout training, the learner will reach a stage of competence for a certain scenario, for example, intubating a healthy adult, but then fall back to conscious incompetence when they encounter a more complex patient, for example, a, intubating a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. Or to use another example, taking a history from a straightforward patient, but being unable to take a concise history from a very talkative patient. So essentially, Learners in medical training are moving back and forth between these two states as they gain more experience and master increasingly complex patients. Unfortunately, preceptors often stop observing senior residents and thus these learners do not receive valuable advice about how to deal with challenging patient scenarios. Over time, the learner stops thinking about the skill and is able to perform the skill based primarily on their practical experience. The learner is now unconsciously competent, a state we want all independent physicians to reach. At this point, it's often difficult for a physician to explain to a learner how to perform the skill. They just do it. Hence, the inherent difficulty in experienced in experience clinicians providing clear instructions to novices on how to do something. The expert knows that what the novice is doing is wrong, but they do not know how to correct it. Instead, they often take over and say, don't do it like that, do it like this. So to facilitate a learner moving through this cycle, a teacher needs to first focus on involving them in their patient care, and secondly, provide specific information to the learner on how to improve their performance and master the skill. So the take home message from this presentation is that to be an effective teacher in the clinical setting, one must facilitate learning by involving students in the care of our patients, thus motivating them to learn about what they need to know to become successful clinicians. In summary, in this session, we discuss the roles and characteristics of effective clinical teachers, how adults learn in the clinical setting, and how to facilitate their learning. In the next session, we will explore in more practical detail how to set up a successful teaching learning experience in your clinic. The steps involved include taking an interest in the learner, preparing the learner for the patient encounter, and involving them in your patient care without losing control over your clinic. For more information about how to teach in the clinical setting, I have listed a number of useful online resources. Please feel free to contact our UBC Office for Faculty Development and Educational Support for more information. Thank you.